and then they get to work on a game for about two semesters building it from the ground up. However, this year, Capstone has gotten a wild card, which is COVID-19 lockdown. The students have had to work on their project remotely for the majority of the time, which has made them have to think fast and tackle many obstacles that previous teams never had to face. Despite these challenging times, the teams have come out on top with some amazing wins to off today, and we are extremely proud of them. This year, there are four Capstone teams. Our first team is a third-person stealth game set in a unique New Orleans-inspired Greek underworld. But if something cute and colorful is more your style, we've got you covered there too, as another team has created a magical world filled with adorable plant creatures. If you're more of an adrenaline junkie, our third team has made a fast-paced hoverboard game which takes the player through a gigantic world filled with magic and mystery, inspired from Aztec culture. And lastly, we have a team that has created a creepy horror game oozing with inspiration from Little Nightmares. So without further ado, let's get started. Remember, all of the students are on standby to answer any questions live in the comments and interact with everyone tuning in. With that said, let's begin with our very first team, Penguin Void Productions, who will be presenting their game, Kore. So I am the project lead for the game Corey in Penguin Void Out Studios. Oh my god, Thomas is always late. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Corey is a stealth-driven, uh, narrative-driven game where we are taking a, a journey down the River Styx into the underworld uh, as Persephone. Oh, Persephone. Oh, good to hear you. Is that Thomas? Hello, guys. Yeah, hey. what's up? Wait, where's your camera, camera, Thomas? Thomas, where's your camera? How do I come on, How do I make on, the, How do I make the screen full in order to meet up with Hades and then finally become the queen of the underworld? Wait, like full screen Discord? You mean? Yeah. How do I? It's just a little box on the top right. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I really want to do working with the team has been great. You know they've. Uh, all been super helpful. Everybody is very supportive of each other. I didn't want to do Are that. Are you streaming? Time is. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, you know, there's there's never one person left out. We're all no. Come on, you got this. No. Oh, you just oh, mute okay. yourself, Thomas. Okay. Thomas. Well, now we, we can see you. Wow. Now, now, now he's the headphone button. Oh my god. There, well, there, there we go. Hey, okay. hey, you. I did. <laughs> so you know, there's been some some player feedback, guys, from some of these play tests. Uh, the, the game keeps on crashing. And we got we got to find a solution. Okay, so the games the games crashing, and we we, we need to, we need to we need to fix that, or what, what do we? Uh, you know, they they have to start all the way back at the beginning. You know, they'd like to have something that uh you know lets them come back to where they were before the game crashed. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, there's just been a lot of creativity throughout the old team, uh, in terms of artwork, in terms of game design. Uh, so, okay, so to make it clear, we're not fixing the crash. We just want them to come back to where they are, and that's totally fine, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, no. uh, just concepting out, even narrative stuff's been, like, phenomenal. So, you know, it's just been really a, a, a good time to be on the team and uh, to work with all these amazing people. Like, I mean, it's a JSON file. It could be a duck, but... <laughs> right. I don't know if that would fit with our, our creative vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, why don't we just have like a bunch of boxes in the world itself, you know? And then those could just yeah. be every time they come across a box, it's just a checkpoint or something. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. oh, but I am remembering now though, I think I think Jed made this really cool concept for like a like a plant, like a like a Hades flowery plant. Maybe we could use that. What, yeah. if, what, what if we just tell the artists that they can use either or and they can decide what they want and we'll just, you know, go with it. My name's Kai. I'm the art lead on Kore, also the character artist. All right, Kai, thanks for uh, you know joining us here. We got a, a new feature for you. Um, so earlier today, Matt messaged me because there's going to be a meeting uh, about explaining some new feature to me so that I can explain it to the artists. 
I mean, it's, it's kind, of, kind of cutting it close to the wire, so I hope it's something that's super necessary. Yeah, so basically we have those uh, boxes in the world, right? So you know how Persephone can suck her head into the box? So whenever she does that, it saves the game. But it, but it also, it might be one of the plants, okay? Because, you know, we don't, it doesn't matter how we do the art right now. Let's just focus on making the, the, the feature. The feature. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to solve a game crashing issue by putting save points. Why aren't the save No, 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 no. This, this is going to be way easier. This is way easier. We're going to pass that, that whole file um, through, through Nate's server that he set up before. Yeah. Tutorial text beginning that explains all this because I'm no, not going to do some uh, brain casting based off where the player is located on every single object in the game. Right? Yeah. Use if it's going to be the flower or the box because that's going to require a lot. No, of no, no. Look, we have to make it first. We don't. We, that's, that's later. That's later. That's later. So the artist yeah. need the time to make the thing for it. You guys creative though. Like you don't. This yeah, you, you guys just like this. And then. You know, I try. I try my best to understand what what the tech people are saying to me at any given moment. You know, it's, sometimes it's hard to mm -hmm. reach that barrier between you know the tech speak and the art speak. But Can like, we go back to the ray tracing to every object part? I'm not really following that. Why are you? Why? All right, Kai, hear me out. But like, sometimes I feel like they're not even speaking English to me. So basically, you just use the ray tracing of the image, and then you can make the game transfer to the game. And then you can use the ray tracing of the image, and then you can make the game transfer to the game. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That's like probably the best way to do it. Yeah, I have no idea what he's saying. Yeah, that last meeting, no idea what Chao was saying. I was just going with it. You didn't. What part of what part of it don't you understand, Kai? Okay, guys. So I just got done with this huge tech meeting, and then a leads meeting that followed the tech meeting, and then another leads meeting that followed the tech meeting, and then a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Thomas and Matt. And yeah, so I do my best when the tech side wants something to try to talk them down into things that are more reasonable and more in scope. But it's just, but what they want for it is they want it to be a model that is both a box but also a plant. Awful. And they also want 20 animations for it, and they also want a particle effect for it. Um, you know, it, it, sometimes it just isn't isn't entirely possible. Um, I talked them down to ten animations because twenty is just absurd. Animations. We uh, can't do that any many animations. They know like what an animation is like. But we need it or else the game can't ship. Is what they're telling me, and I know that it's going to be crunching you guys. I know I'm I'm still in talks with them, but yeah. Okay, like uh. What do you uh, need from me, like, on the tech art side? And then, like, I have to be really careful because, like, Diana, Di you know, most people have the issue that people won't do the work that's assigned to them. Like, do you, do you want something like a, like, some kind of tool that can work between the boxes and things, like, uh, the boxes and the plants, like, just in case, like, uh... Do no, 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 Diana, no, 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 we just need a particle effect. Diana, it's, it's the opposite. I asked me to jump off a cliff. I would. So, like, special, you, you, not like a custom Boyd's movement or like a... No, 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 no. They can't decide whether the save point should be Persephone sticking her head through the box or interacting with a flower, and we need to figure out a way to make animations that could work in either of those situations. Oh. Okay, it's not really similar, like, at all? Yeah, so I have overall been enjoying being animated for this team. I don't usually know what's happening. They just tell me to animate her doing this movement, and I live in Maya, and I do that. And then every presentation, I get to be surprised by what the game looks like and what our game is doing. I think we'd want to do something that could work for both, because we don't have time to do that many animations. Oh, no, we don't. This thing is due in, like, a week. What? Hello? Oh, what am I supposed to be talking to you about? Okay, so like my experience on Capstone? Um, what time is it? Why are y'all making me record this at my bedtime? It is 1 p.m., guys. 
Yeah, like, well, it's something you could do that could be, this could be a box or it could be flowers. So, like, I got a box and, like, I don't know. She could just, like, kind of, I don't know, like, a, like, kind of stick her head up in here and then, like, kind of uh, drag around and, like, flower, flower. You know, something like that. I don't you guys know I'm nocturnal. Like, I don't ever talk to any of you because I sleep from, like, morning people time to, like, afternoon people time, and then I get my work done at night. So, like, I don't know what's going on with anyone in this team because I wake up and I get the updates and I go to bed and then I get my updates. And I'm just, time is irrelevant, people. Time. Maybe maybe she's smelling the flower and also kind of sticking her head in the box. Like, in the box. Like, yeah, like, is she going into a box or is she smelling the flower? Time does not exist anymore. We just get our work done. That's my capstone experience. I was tasked on the saving system. And I know that we are a detail-oriented game, like detail-oriented. All right. So we need a save system, right? We need a save system. People need to load in. We need to load in, right? Yeah. You, you, you follow me? So when they load back in, they need to make sure that everything is the right position and location and speed and all that good stuff. See, the problem with AAA companies is that they don't have high fidelity save systems they just don't they don't do it they don't do it right they, they don't do it right they use the unreal one because easy we're going to look through the entire level and we're going to take every actor we're going to save every actor position and their yeah. and their collision things and and we're going to save that out to file and then so i'm thinking that like we have to make the saving system from scratch. They're like, going to be so insanely impressed with this save system. It's the best one that's ever been made. They're, they're going to ha- they're going to know where the rocks are. They, they're the rocks. If they fall down a mountain and I load back in, they're gonna, they're, those rocks are going to be in motion at the right position. None of this. None of this saving them at certain positions. None of this events. I'm getting like errors, like. Um, compiler errors, and, uh, yeah, what do I do about that? Uh, yeah. Have you tried the, the steps that we, uh, that you were told to take before you, before any features in? Yeah. Do you know what that was? Uh, it was compile, close it down, and open it up again, right? Yeah, I did that. No, I, I, I have to take care of, uh, implementation of, like, the art assets. I have to make sure they get in engine and, like, they work and stuff. You know, you, you compile and you close it down, right? Yeah. And then you open it up. But before you open it up, you gotta, there's a couple steps that, uh, you gotta take. And then you open up the command window in uh-huh. the right path where, where the, uh, UE4 project is. And then, like, make uh-huh. sure you type in pray. You know, P R A Y pray, and make right. sure that like, make sure that you pray before you open it up again. Um, and you know, it it's really a joy to work with UE4. Like, I've been working with uh, Unity mainly for a while, and you know, UE4 is just really powerful. So what, uh-huh. Instead right. of compile, open, uh, close, compile, it's now open, compile, close, compile, open now. And you've got to go into the blueprints sometimes, and you've got to also compile those manually because sometimes Unreal does Just before you open it back up again, don't sit in your chair. Like, stood up for like three seconds and twirl. And, like, it's UE4 is good and uh, powerful. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it really helps it work, you know? Uh, webcam integration is a really yeah. honored. Uh, unreal uh, heuristic. Yeah, absolutely. And I hate it. I hate it so much. It It's like an actively malicious force. I feel like every time I open the software, it wants to kill me. Can someone let him know we're in Discord and not Zoom? Okay, he's back. Yeah. No, uh... Who's gonna get in here? Why every no every time the camera? It's right next to the stream button. It's literally right next to it. Yeah. Oh wait, no. You're muted. Oh, you did get. All the buttons are right next to it. Okay, here we are.
I'm here to tell you all that we're going to be making some cuts. Uh, so you all know this, uh, this safe system we've been working on. I put a lot of hard work into it. And so I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is we fixed the crashing. We did it. Apparently, if somebody uh, checked the do not check this box, it will crash the game check mark on all the assets. I don't know who did it, but we fixed the problem. So now we will be cutting the save checkpoint system from the game. We do not need it anymore. But it's in game. Uh, like it's working. No, we, uh, we're, just like, we're just throwing the whole thing out. I already instructed Jonathan to remove it from engine and make sure that uh, any traces of it in Perforce have been utterly removed. Uh, well, I guess it's just me and Diana now. Daughter, you don't get to walk away from me. Persephone! Hades, are you there? Pers, what are you doing here? I did it. I got away. To live with you. It's not safe for you here. Things are changing down here, and not for the better. What's wrong? Not happy to see me? Of course I am. Just... Nothing survives in the underworld. I'm waiting past the gate, but you need to find the key. And I'm guessing it's not under a rock nearby. Through the city. Careful, those are new. Mother's parting gifts. What are those ghosts? Watchers. Wait there, let me figure something out. Let me. Now that's no place for a goddess. This is mine now. Pers, are you alright? Yeah, just using my god-given talents. Another friend of yours? Lost souls, forever wandering the underworld. 
they won't hesitate to stop you. Land of the dead can get crowded. Right. Child, I am counting down the minutes until you come crawling back. Go back. No, I can do this. It's right up there, in the temple. Need to find another way around. I thought souls down here were supposed to move on. There's always a cost. Everyone needs to earn their passage. And my price? In the center. That will buy your passage. I have an idea to get rid of them. Just need to get a little higher. Here we are. Time for something new. One step further, and Zeus help you! Try me. And they're gone. Grab the coin before they come back. I have to tell you something. The coin isn't meant for any living soul. Things. It'll change. Change how? Remember when we used to sit under the great pomegranate tree in your mother's garden, looking up at the stars above us, feeling the grass 
just beneath us. Hades? If you do this, there's no turning back. You might not see that tree ever again. Would you be able to come with me? Back up top, I mean. No. I'm trapped in here just like all the other spirits. And if you stay, I'm afraid you'll also be lost forever. Then that's a risk I'll take. I'm not leaving you ever again. And if I get lost, I'd rather be lost with you. You're my home now. Okay? Absolutely. Missed. My doing. It will help protect you. Oh. Thanks. I hear them. You know that I love you, right? What's bringing this on? Something is coming. And I don't know if I'll be able to stop it from taking me away. Hades, you can't leave. I need you. You have it backwards. I was the one who always needed you. You are stronger than you know. Hades? Hades! Sweet child. Mom? I told you this would happen. That you would be alone. Now let's return to the way things were. No! I'm never going back! <laughs> you won't get far. life. You don't have any power over me. Oh, but you certainly don't mind using the powers I gave you. They're not yours anymore. <laughs> Aren't they? No, 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 no. Foolish girl! This is what I'm trying to protect you from. From a life that will chew you up. <sighs> Finally. Persephone, come back to me. Come back home. You're all alone now. I... She will never be alone. Ever again. Hades! Sorry, but this is a family affair. He is my family. And he's right. I choose to live my life. Not yours. No! I 
I was scared. Scared of the world, my place in it, of being alone. But I'm not anymore. I fought to have a say in my life, to choose who I am. And I'm never going to give that up. From now on, I decide what my future will be. My queen. Our new future. Our new Elysium. Amazing job making Corey. Next, we have Keepers of the Trees, which is made by Studio Chili. So let's have a look. Hello, my name is Sam Roberts, project lead of Studio Chili, and I'm super happy and excited to show you guys Keepers of the Trees, the game that we've been working on for the past eight months. Before we jump into the demo, I'd like to give a quick overview of our game to anyone tuning in for the very first time. Keepers of the Trees is a couch co-op puzzle platforming game that puts you and a friend in control of the Keepers. The Keepers are mystical guardians of the forest and have the ability to manipulate nature around them. Throughout the game, you, and a friend, will need to use the environment and its plants and seeds in order to solve the level's traversals puzzles. The themes of our game revolve around the ideas of balance, give and take, loss and restoration. And our tone that we set out to achieve was a mystical and wondrous world with enchanting and endearing characters. The core gameplay of Keepers of the Trees revolves around placing plants and the ability to grow or degrow them at the player's command. The Keepers use these plants in order to solve various types of traversal puzzles set out in the levels. These plants can be used by themselves, or they can be used together. For example, if our keeper needs to jump up on the ledge there, he can grow a mushroom to bounce up. There are a handful of more plants that the keepers can use to get through levels, such as the beanstalk, which the keepers can climb, the star flower, which allows the keepers to grow plants in different directions, or the dandelion, which allows the players to float over great distances. With that brief overview over, without any further ado, I'd like to present to you Studio Chili's Keepers of the Trees.
So I have to say the keepers are some of the cutest characters that we've ever had come out of Faya. So great job, Studio Chile. Next we have Axolotl presenting Isakali of the Wind. Hello everyone, friends, family, past Fians, and of course, fellow Cohort 16ers. I'm Taylor, project lead of Axolotl Productions, and our game is Iskali of the Wind. Before I begin, I just want to take a moment to say a few things about our team. Our team has been through quite a bit together. We had our struggles over the course of this project. Our team was really forged in fire, uh, but we came out the other side stronger because of it. I just want to thank each member of Axolotl Productions for their dedication to the project and to the team and for trusting me to be their project lead over the last five months. It's been an honor and a pleasure to work with all of you and I'm incredibly proud of what we've been able to achieve together. Now it's my pleasure to present to you Iskali of the Wind. What you just saw was the intro cinematic to Iskali of the Wind, which introduces our main character Iskali and the adventure she's about to embark on. Iskali is an acolyte of the Wind God, inspired by the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, who is often depicted as a feathered serpent. Iskali is tasked by the Wind God to restore power to his realm. She must do this by being the kinetic spark that restores power to the divine machine that is the realm of the Wind God. Iskali of the Wind is all about moving through the world on this divine hoverboard that was once the staff and shield of the Wind God. As she moves through the world, Iskali manipulates energy in the world around her using the board. Iskali repowers the board by moving at max speed and by drifting. She then uses that energy to power her boost and charged jump abilities. 
She can also interact with the sources of energy in the world. There are seals which need to have energy deposited into them to repower the realm, and there are also energy wells where Is Kelly can repower the board. Is Kelly can also use the board to absorb or deposit energy into slipstreams. Slipstreams are remnants of the trails that the Wind God used to travel. These slipstreams contain energy that carries Is Kelly along them. Adding energy into the slipstream makes them push you faster, and removing energy from the slipstreams makes them push you less fast. Now that you have an idea of how our game works, let's take a look at how it all comes together in Is Kelly of the Wind.
If we were together in the bridge right now, this is when I would call down our team and introduce each team member and thank them for their contributions to the project. Since unfortunately I can't do that, this video is going to stand in and do that for me. And that is Is Kali of the Wind from Axolotl Productions. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, so now we're in the morning stretch and we're going to take a look at our final presentation. Our final game is called Wick, made by Studio Whip. Let's have a look. Hey, everyone. My name is Zachary Carlins. I'm the project lead at Studio Whip or as the team likes to call me, the big dumb protein robot of the team. Before we get to today's presentation, let's take a moment for one of our sponsors. Hopeful. Happy. Helpful. At Lackadaisy Health Group Incorporated, we're dedicated to providing affordable care to entitled millennials who are afraid of dying from a case of the sniffles. That's why we're partnering with Big Pharma to give lightly used PPE and recently expired medications to thousands of millennials in need. Stop by one of our convenient dumpster locations to pick up your gift today. Because you're poor, and you need us. I'm Barbara Windbag and I approve this message.
it is incredibly hard to believe that this is the last status update. It still feels like yesterday that we had the entire team in Teen Spirit and we were laying out the concept of our game Wick. I'll never forget the last eight months for the rest of my life, and the group of people that make up Studio Whip are the exact reason for that. I had the opportunity to work with the most hardworking and talented devs I've ever seen or heard of, and the best part is that this team truly feels like a family, and has since the very beginning. I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for all your hard work and continuous pushing since the since the very beginning of this project. Uh, I know the leads that were hard on you a lot and pushed this team uh, every chance they possibly could, especially towards the end. But thank you for putting up with us and doing whatever you needed and pushing beyond that, uh, always beyond what was needed of you guys. So thank you so much for that. I also wanted to thank the leads for putting up with me, nagging them, and making them get into meetings all the time. You've all been amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better group to help lead this team through the craziness that is Faya. I also want to thank Tom for putting up with me uh, and also working with me personally throughout this process and pushing the team to make the best game possible, even if we don't listen to you every single time. <laughs> Overall, even though this team might be full of clowns and can be a circus at times, I would never want it any other way. So, all right, now that my sappy comments are over, typically this is where I start my PowerPoint. But I am sure everyone is sick and tired of me, uh, of me talking for all the status updates for 40 minutes straight. So today, you're going to actually hear from the devs behind WIC and get a peek into what these last eight months have been like. I did interviews with everyone on the team, and now you're going to see the question and their responses. Warning, the team has not seen this, and also you can see that our team gets pretty savage and there's lots of roasting. So beware of what's to come. Again, team, thank you so much for everything you've done. You've been absolutely phenomenal and I wish you the best in the future. Um, my favorite moment or memory from Capstone. I really loved the week where people were nice to me and they had to be nice to me. That was really the best thing about probably all of Capstone. Probably when I started uh, yelling at people because they were late to stand up and the team leads just let me get away with it. Honestly, my favorite memory was the time when we all stayed late trying to get that trailer done because at some point we just play, start playing a loop of Wii music. As a team, I would probably say when we all whipped together for like one of the status updates. One that comes to mind is sitting in Teen Spirit and Pat joking about uh, wanting more tech artists and Joe just screaming at him. Pat! <laughs> like when we first created our team and unanimously, almost unanimously, decided to call it Studio Whip. Every time Hannah just got up and just did her clown announcement, that just made my day. You, you know what? My favorite moment was probably when um we all got together in the room and you got us food. <laughs> us leads are in our, our late night Wii shop and Pat is saying some stupid <laughs> And we're all losing our minds because we've all <laughs> we have all our it's like two o'clock in the morning and all of us are exhausted. And Pat's humming the We Shop channel. We're talking about how we're all when he opens his email. You know, I don't think Zach did, did enough work. Zach didn't make anything for Capstone. Anything mm. at all. He Zach comes in and Zach is like, yeah, I have an artist background. I'm an artist. By the way, did I say I'm an artist? And then he made a wax blob. One single wax blob that kind of looks like... The wing bones? Like flying with the wing bones and getting, getting uh, your contraption to like turn with like with physics to actually turn the head with the wing bones when once you actually made flight by getting enough speed that's hilarious it's pretty frustrating working with andrew's ai which has cut years <laughs> of my life and has caused us to broke 
break up and uh Rick was right. <laughs> <laughs> person on the team oh i i don't even need to see your hands about the same one joe i mean goddamn, joe roasts himself more than anyone else needs to roast him i mean it, it's almost to the point where it's like yeah it's like i was gonna say something that that might that might be uh, a roast to joe but like if i wait long enough he'll probably already go ahead and say it i am i would probably say hidden secret underdog andrew but Hannah is Hannah. Funniest person? We all know who the funniest person is. Like, the one and only ringleader herself. The Iron Nun. We bow to Hannah. This is not a question. Hannah. Duh. <laughs> Hannah. Hannah. Hannah, probably. Hannah is iconic. Or just in general, Hannah is a treat. A bunch of clowns and bozos. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think they understand the question, but whatever. Okay, so Tom was after Tom has been after everyone in the leadership position at different points, but um, I think Pat probably wins. Boy, it, it definitely has to be one of the leads. I think if it's if it's not Joe, Pat, or Kelby, <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> Early days, it was Joe because of the rigging stuff. Uh, mid days it was Pat because of the gameplay stuff, and late days now that it's like all dev stuff, I feel like Kelby. Patrick work. Uh, Pat because he's Pat. Pat, Pat because like he, it's Pat. Possibly Pat, maybe Kelby. I'm not sure. <laughs> Kelby. Say so, yeah, I think it was Kelby because like. You joke the most about. So Tom wanted to strangle me so much throughout the project. It's it's pretty funny. He had to be very clear that he didn't hate me at all, and that he he doesn't actually hate me, which I still don't believe. I don't care what you say, Tom. Oh, Kelby, hands down. Freaking weeb stuck there trying to do his schedule, and he came up with some of the. God love him. I love him so much, but sometimes he was just ridiculous. Who made a Likert scale that's even? There's no ambiguity in that. I thought he was paying attention during class, but nope, we got a six-point Likert scale, bunch of amateurs. The dining table, because I really got time to like make that intricate, and the stained glass, which I really enjoyed, because I got to work with Aria, and we, it's one of the few pieces of stained glass that actually could be made in real life, and I thought that was really cool. I mean, I feel like 90%, 80% of like my time has been in the library, so I guess the library. <laughs> I loved the entire process of building up Mara, and how, how we took all these pieces of everyone's ideas and put them all together, um, and it kind of gave her a life of her own, or undeath, as it would be. <coughs> I made things. Um, cool. Uh, John lighting things on fire with his head is fun. Making it look nice and pretty. Check one. I think. I would personally say I liked working on Lijonas because that was such a weird thing to do. I liked making the bug. I liked Lijonas. Lijona? What are we calling him now? <laughs> Uh, he, he gets pronounced differently in every single presentation we do. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, I am the bug man. The, the Lejonis mosquitoes, oh my god. It was, it was rewarding to work on, and uh, it helped add a little bit more of like a, a, a reputation or whatever, if you will, from just being the Unreal Man to now being the bug man. And in some way, shape, or form, it's a little bit better. I don't know. I skipped arm day, so I don't really flex. I don't know. I own the level. Like, <laughs> the game is the flex. I had an entire week where people had to be nice to me. For clown business, 
Um, I yelled at the team and they thought it was so funny that they made me faculty advisor and allowed me to run a clown court and give everyone clown names. And I'm not even a team lead and they're just like, yeah, she's the ringmaster, so amen. The most roasted? It'd have to be between Joe's left and right foot. Joe. <laughs> no question. I feel bad because it's mostly me, I feel like. I'm sorry, but it's probably Joe. I we had I mean, if you get roasted so much that we have an entire week dedicated to not roasting you, you win that competition by default. Joe? Maybe? It's 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 a tough decision between uh, Joe and Kelby because they're both like the degenerates of our team. But <laughs> like Kelby got roasted the most. Who got roasted the most? Probably Kelby. I feel like everything he like says and does can be used against him. <laughs> Kelby because he's Kelby. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Kelby had to be put in clown court and then clown jail and have his clown name revoked because somebody decided to keep thinking that Nani was an acceptable use for any reasonable conversation with normal people. A toss-up between Kelby and Joe. And, you know, I couldn't think of two better weaves to get roasted all the time. Okay, I'm so sick of hearing about their anime crap and they say Nani to anything. It's like, just say what? Say what? They know. Oh, you learned some Japanese from Anaway. We get it. We get it. But God, just leave it out of the meeting. So we're in a Discord call, and Hannah is talking, and Kelby interrupts her. And Hannah just goes, Oh, I'm sorry, Kelby. Did the middle of my sentence interrupt the beginning of yours? And I just <laughs> lost my. <laughs> Probably clown court. Um, he kept saying a bunch of stupid puns, and I was trying to go about my day working in peace, and suddenly I get 50-plus Slack notifications of, like, Anna Kelby's doing this. Take him to court. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay, fine. Um, I removed his clown name for a week and made him uh, have a profile picture of him with a rainbow wig and a clown nose. Uh, courtesy of Zach, that was that was incredible. So I really hope he bears that scar for the rest of his life. Honestly. Hard. I went to freaking clown jail for God's sake. I had my clown name <laughs> taken from my cold dead hands. It feels like going against like my moral codes to do this because I have been adamant about being anti-whip since the beginning of Fire. Uh, I feel like I shouldn't. Uh, there's not going to be a big whip at the end of the party, so this would be the time. This do it. The whip. Let's see if I remember how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Look at the camera. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making the video. Uh, I, it was pretty funny, and like I said, it does get pretty brutal with the roasts in this team. Uh, but that, that's what makes it so much fun. Uh, I want to take a moment, though, also to thank a whole bunch of the different uh, social media people that ended up working with us throughout the project. Um, first, Alpha Beta Gamer. Uh, they made a video for us, uh, and we ended up getting close to 50,000 uh, views on that video, so that was really cool. Uh, it's just Jord, another Little Nightmares uh, subscriber that had hilarious com commentary throughout the entire video. Uh, so thank you again for the support there. And also Viking Gaming, again, just another Little Nightmares supporter that wanted to get our game out there and give us a little bit more attention. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, and then I also wanted to say thank you for everyone on social media who made fan art for us. Uh, here's one example and a whole bunch of others. Uh, so thank you again for all the support from the very beginning of this game. Uh, we appreciate all of it, and I know the team has been loving the fan art and the videos. So thanks again. 
Now, without any further ado, here is our game, Wick.
Awesome job studio whip and to remember you can go download that game on Steam and try it out for yourselves. I'm sure the team would love to hear the feedback. And also we want to say thank you to everyone who tuned in to the capstone presentations this year. It means a lot to the teams. And remember, if you have any kind of questions, please feel free to post them in the comments because all the students are standing by live ready to answer them. And hopefully next year we'll actually be able to see you guys in person for our final presentations. And one last thank you to all the teams for all of their hard work and getting through the lockdown and coming out on the other side. Great job and we'll see you next year.